and love. But as my guest today, Barbara Wilder, will explain, perhaps we should start to think of money as love. Sounds strange, doesn't it? I mean, can we really start to see money, which for me often represents stress or worry, as something that could actually connect us to our soul? Barbara says yes. But before I introduce her, let me tell you a little bit about Barbara. Barbara Wilder is an internationally acclaimed author, speaker, teacher, and healer. She's the founder and director of the Transformational Light Center and the author of the book, Money is Love. Welcome to the Dream Power Show, Barbara. It is wonderful to be here, Debbie. Okay. Thank you for having me. Okay, you've got to explain why you say money is love. What does money is love mean? It's not that money is yet love. It is, money is love is a, like a mantra or a prayer to help us transform the energy around money from fear and worry and anxiety to love and and the ability to relax in our lives in this new vibration of money is love. And so by beginning to think about it like that, to begin to just say it as a mantra or a prayer, we have the power to begin to change our conception our belief systems and the old patterns around the idea that money is scarce and there's not enough and that we will never have enough. So it's, it's a, an ongoing process uh, that I invite everyone to join me in because the more people that think just even for a few moments a day that money is love as opposed to money is scary <laughs> that the more we we it's a ripple effect and the more it will move out into the greater consciousness of the world you know in civilization probably a long time ago where we didn't have this connection with money as being something that's scarce or something to be feared or something or to something that that we've have fear about because it is so scarce. So what happened to us as people? Well, thanks, such a good question. And that's what I took a long time delving into when I first was introduced to this concept that money is love. And I went, where, where is that truth? Where does it exist? Because I know it's true. I can feel it's true in my, in my heart. So where, where did it come from? And so I just, I began researching money. I researched money for a whole year um, in every way possible, including in my dream state and in my meditative state. And also I realized that I had to go back before written history into prehistory to really get an understanding of how we used to be connected. We were originally when we, uh, in the well, just going back just a, a little past five thousand years ago, and and everything before that, we were connected to the divine Mother Earth. Uh, Earth was our God. It was, it was the feminine under, understanding of God that that the Earth herself was our God, and we were connected directly to her through everything, and so. And she supported us in everything. Truly, she gave us our, our water, our food, you know, our warmth, our um, everything we needed to make clothes, to make pottery, to to, um, to, 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 to live and exist. And even up through the late Neolithic and up to, into um, early civilizations, we, we were completely taken care of by everything on the earth and so when we would exchange things when we would meet another tribe um, and we would 
I'll say, ah, here, I, we've just killed a woolly mammoth. Here's some woolly mammoth meat. And they said, oh, great. And we'll give you some of these berries we've been collecting along the route. And that was the original exchange. And that was how money beca began. And because everything was connected directly to the Mother Earth as holy or sacred, the exchange was sacred. And, and money, therefore, as it evolved and became coins um, and made out of silver and gold, it, uh, it, car it carried still that sacredness. And, and, and we knew that there was always abundance. We knew that there was, that there was enough for everybody because when you're, when you're on this great big earth and you're living from the earth, you know that. You have to know that or you can't survive. But when we made this change, and this was a change that happened in our, in our consciousness, in our brains. It was a brain shift, a literal neurological brain shift. We moved into abstract thought. And we moved from just being part of the the literal world into a world where we could see differentiation and we begin to individuate and and that was really exciting in the beginning in the beginning that was very exciting and both the masculine and feminine and men and women there were masculine gods and feminine gods and there was this beautiful coming together and an understanding and there was so much abundance there was so much new thought and then it got skewed. There was a moment in time when this individuation got moved out of the sacred and we began to stand up at, or not all of us, just some of us stood up in front of the tribe and said, or in front of the city state and said, we're better than the rest of you and we're going to take your stuff. And we started to have war and we started to, tr to try to make ourselves better by having more stuff, more money. And that's where we got, that's where it became, we changed this idea in our brains from understanding that there was enough for all of us to there's only enough for some of us so that, other, so that we, there could be power over others. And that's where we've been stuck for about 5,000 years. Talking about money itself and, and that, you know, the symbols we use for money, whether it's paper money or checks or credit cards or, you know, virtual money, whatever we have today. Uh, so here I have a dollar bill, American dollar bill in my hand. And, you know, here on the front, we've got, you know, good old George Washington. And on the back, we've got, you know, symbol of the, you know, American Eagle. And then we have the symbol of an eye over a pyramid. Why do you think our, the people who came up with this money put this on our money? That's just a wonderful question. Um, first of all, during this changeover from money being barter to money being coins, then to keep us connected back in this history again, one side of the coin would be impressed with a, a picture of like the chief or the king, um, and the other side would be impressed with the, with a god or a goddess, and to and money was like the connection between the spiritual and the and the and the the, the here now world, and so when the dollar bill changed to to having the, the these images on the back happened during the depression, the Great Depression in the United States in the 30s. And, and Roosevelt, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, knew about this, this old ancient way of money being connected to the sacred. And he came up with this idea. And he put, so that if you actually fold the, the, the bill in half, you will see that on one side you see the eagle and on the other side you see the pyramid with the eye above it, which is the eye of Horus, which is the all-seeing eye of God. Um, and, and it was so that it actually is 
still as we in, in just in our money um this doesn't exist on in in any of the other uh in the euro or um in most of the other monies that i've looked at how do we shift ourselves away from what i think i would say most people have uh, you know the the self-limiting beliefs about money that uh, it's scarce that it's uh something to worry about that we have to you know wonder uh you know if this could be my last paycheck or is this going to be you know the only place i can get money if i buy something um is that going to diminish my money and am i, I going to get something to replenish it how do we get away from those mindsets the basis for everything for this shift for humanity is finding the love and trust within ourselves um we, we hear a lot in in the the spiritual community of self about self love and self and um and uh and, and everybody kind of thinks that's a brand new idea <laughs> i've noticed uh and, but in truth that's another one of those ancient things as as we first individuated and and changed got that abstract thinking the the greatest all the great philosophers believed that loving the self was the highest place that you could be because that was connecting you directly to god because the self is god that goes back to socrates and aristotle and before into the ancient egyptians and and hermes trismegistos and the hermetic principles it's that it's that basic in our in our dna so when we so but a patriarchal structure or a dominated structure that we live in and have for the past 5,000 years doesn't want anybody to love themselves because then there can't be control. When we can't, a person that truly loves themselves cannot be controlled by anyone. And we live in an era when we're all supposed to be controlled. And that's why we live in fear that there's not enough because that's part of the control so it has to start within us we have to go okay i'm, I'm going to do the work it takes for me to learn who that i am the god within and without a part of all of, of the, that is that is abundant because the universe is abundant the universe is abundant we have all the resources we need on this planet right now and all we do is think about how we don't have enough i mean we have just just with solar power we could power everything on the planet and it wouldn't cost a penny but that means we have to break down the structure and the structure has to start within ourselves and so to learn to love ourselves to learn to think of ourselves as abundant and part of an abundant universe it's a it's it's a process and and using using kind of the mantra of money as love and kind of saying that and spending your money as love and thinking about that it you know might sound silly or against going against all rational belief but when you do it you begin to help yourself open to your own abundance and and that connection because we are all connected the um on, on the cover of my book, uh, where is it? It's not here. Any, oh, yes, it is. Um, this is the goddess Kuan Yin. And she's bringing the money as, out of the world and into her heart of compassion because she's the goddess of compassion. And she's bringing that money out of the world that is just encrusted with fear and, and horrible <laughs> scarcity into her heart of compassion to transform it and then she's handing it back into the world on a vibration of love that's what we want to do we want to be that because that that loving goddess of compassion lives inside of us how can people find out more about this and about you and about what you have to offer yes well i have my website which is www.barbarawilder.com very simple barbarawilder.com um, and you can reach me at barbara at barbarawilder.com
Thank you, Barbara, for being on this show. We've been speaking with author Barbara Wilder on the concept of why money is love.